Lech Walesa, the leader of the Polish Solidarity Movement, is seen standing on a podium at the Gdansk shipyards. The Solidarity Movement was an independent trade union that marked the first anti-communist movement in the Soviet satellite states. Walesa, being the first of his kind, gained a lot of support. Many workers at shipyards joined him in striking against the Polish communist government. Another man involved with the Polish Solidarity Movement was Chief Marian Jurczyk. The Polish Public Prosecutor's Office investigated against him for his anti-communist beliefs. Valenza gained so much popularity that he received near-celebrity status, as is shown by him signing autographs to the people of Poland. I too remember these words. I, a shipyard worker from Gdansk, who has devoted his entire life, along with other members of the Solidarity Movement, to the service of this idea, government of the people, by the people, for the people. Valenza gained a lot of popularity, but this couldn't be done alone. His main advisor, Tedouj Mazaviki, was a journalist who helped Valenza further the Solidarity Movement through his skills in publicity. Showing how different Valenza's ideas really were, the previous leader of Poland, Wojciech Jaruzelski, is shown here with Mikhail Gorbachev, the leader of the Soviet Union. Valenza broke these ties, or tried to. With Solidarity now a quite strong independent trade union poised at taking over the Polish government, Wojciech Jaruzelski imposed martial law on December 13, 1981. Another man involved with the communist side of Poland was Communist Party chief Edward Gierek, who was responsible for a brief economic boom around 1975, which was followed by a complete destruction of the Polish economy. This economic downfall allowed Valenza to further secure a large popularity. Another man on the anti-communist side of Poland, Broderick Crawford, an American, speaks for Radio Free Europe, a radio show broadcasted to the Soviet satellite states that was one of the main reasons the Solidarity Movement spread so quickly. Through the Russian lens, the broadcast that Radio Free Europe broadcasted to the Soviet satellite states could be seen as tools of propaganda used for the sole purpose of bringing the downfall of the Soviet Union. To Poland is Lech Walesa, to Czechoslovakia is Alexander Dubček. Alexander Dubček was the leader of the Socialist Party in Czechoslovakia who pushed for democratic reforms. At the same time Dubček was trying to liberalize the political side of Czechoslovakia, this man, Otasik, was pushing for a more liberalized economy in Czechoslovakia during the Prague Spring. Another man worth noting is Jiri Hejek, a Czechoslovakian foreign minister during the Prague Spring, who pushed for greater liberalization through diplomatic international meetings. In response to these attempts at liberalization, the Soviet Union sent in many troops under the Warsaw Pact. This photo shows a Czechoslovakian citizen waving a Czechoslovakian flag in front of a Soviet tank. This Soviet invasion was called the Prague Spring. This is a photo of Alexander Dubček speaking out against the Soviet Union's justification of invasion also known as the Brezhnev Doctrine. Showing the extreme remorse for Soviet invasion, a student mourns for Jean Palach, a Czechoslovakian student who committed suicide by self-immolation, or lighting himself on fire, in protest to the Warsaw troops in Czechoslovakia. After the Prague Spring, a new leader, Gustav Husak, was put in place as the leader of the Czechoslovakian Socialist Party. This leader, unlike Dubček, adopted Gorbachev's policy of perestroika. Vaclav Havel, the Czech leader of the Civic Forum, 
a Czech group devoted to democracy, was the last president of Czechoslovakia before it split into the Czech Republic and Slovakia. Václav Havel shows the true first president of a democratic Czechoslovakia. On November 20th, an estimated half million people are in the street. The Communist Party is forced to relinquish power. And by the end of December, Václav Havel is elected president. At the anniversary of the Velvet Revolution, when Czechoslovakia was finally liberated from communist rule, a bust of Stalin is carried with a sign that translate as, nothing lasts forever. <laughs>